segment anything model is easily one of the most influential computer vision models of 2023. Given a photo, Sam can, with high degree of precision, generate masks segmenting objects on the image. Almost immediately after its release, company rushed to incorporate it into their products. Developers started to build the whole ecosystem of tools and libraries around Segment Anything model. And of course, researchers tried to create models building on Sam's success. Over the last two months, we got Personalized Sam, Sam HQ, Mobile Sam, Fast Sam, and probably a lot more than that. If I omitted any important model based on Sam, let me know in the comments. Today, we are going to play with one of the most popular of those models, Fast Sum. We will run it on images with different level of complexity, test different types of prompts, and of course, compare its accuracy and speed with the original Sum. We spent hours researching and testing Fast Sum, so you don't have to. Fast Sam is trying to address one of the biggest drawbacks of Segment Anything model, speed. To do that, authors completely abandoned heavy transformer-based architecture and instead replaced it with YOLO V8 SEC, a real-time CNN-based solution. The model was then trained on 2% of SA1B dataset. If you don't remember, that was the dataset used to train the original SAM. It consists of 11 million images and 1 billion high quality masks, and it was released together with SAM. In many ways, fast SAM paper is the attempt to prove that the dataset you use for model training is the primary factor influencing its final accuracy, probably worth more than the powerful architecture. By the way, if you would like to learn how to train Ultralytics YOLO V8 segmentation model on custom dataset, make sure to check our tutorial. You will find the link in the top right corner and in the description below. Okay, now without further ado, let's dive in. As usual, we prepared Google Colab that you can use to test fast sum on your data. It's exactly the same code I'm using in this tutorial. You can find it on GitHub in the Roboflow Notebooks repository. And for your convenience, I also added the link in the description of this video. At the top of the notebook, you will find information about FastSum, links to paper and the repository, as well as bunch of complementary materials covering segment anything model. Before we put FastSum to the test, Let's run NVIDIA SMI command just to confirm that we have access to the GPU. Both SAM and fast SAM can run on CPU, but GPU is where they can really spread their wings. If you run the code in Google Colab, but NVIDIA SMI command failed, follow the instructions in the cell above to solve the problem. In our case, everything worked as expected. Awesome. Now we can move on and set up our Python environment. First, we clone FastSum repository and install all packages listed in requirements.txt file. To enable text prompts, we will also need to install Clip. If you want to learn more about Clip, we have a separate video covering that model too. But in short, it allows you to predict the most accurate description for a given image. Because we would like to run FastSum and Sum side by side and compare their results, we are also going to install Segment Anything model. And lastly, Additional packages like Roboflow, Supervision, Bounding Box Widget that we are going to use along the way. Next, we need to download weights for both models. We create a separate directory and use wget to download the files we need. When the process finishes, we run ls to list directory content. Make sure to use dash h flag to see the file size in human readable format. We can already notice the difference. Fast sum weights are probably 15 times smaller than sums. All we need to do now is to download few example images. Feel free to use your own data. You can just open File Manager and drag and drop the image into the collab. In the meantime, you can see the data that I'm going to use, my standard doc image and quite a complicated car factory scene with a lot of robots and car parts. We'll see how fast Sam handles hard cases like this. Just like Sam, FastSum offers several inference modes. You can generate masks for every object visible on the scene, but you can also be more picky and prompt model for specific objects. We can do it by providing coordinates of bounding box or specific points on the image. FastSum will return masks most accurately associated with your prompt. 
On top of that, FastSum offers prompting with text. That's why we installed Clip. Now let's dive in and try each of those inference methods one by one, starting with everything prompt. Before we load FastSum into the memory, we need to import it. Unfortunately, at the time of recording, the model lacks proper packaging, so to do it, we need to be inside FastSum directory. Keep in mind, trying to import it from any other directory will probably end up with exception. So let's just use cd command to be sure that we are in the right place. Now we can just load the model into the memory and we are good to go. First, we specify the path to our input image and run the model. Just like SUM, FastSum is also dividing the inference process into two stages. First, we obtain general YOLO V8 results by providing our image, device, and a bunch of additional parameters. The second stage takes into account the prompting method we want to use and return filtered masks. You can also visualize the results by calling the plot method. We can see that the first inference is taking quite a lot of time that's because the weights of our model are being loaded into the memory, creating additional time overhead. You can also see that on our GPU RAM consumption chart. Now we can run the cell once again, and this time we see that the results are being produced much faster. Unfortunately, the plot method can only save results on the hard drive. You can't just return it. Let's refresh the file manager we can see that the output directory was created and we can also click to examine the result image. Searching like that after every inference is not very convenient. So to make it a little bit easier to use, I created a separate utility function using supervision that will draw the mask on the image and return the result. Let's trigger it and we see our result in column. Awesome. As we can see, the quality of the result is not ideal, that is a good opportunity to use the additional inference parameters that I mentioned earlier. There are two main that we are going to use, confident threshold and IOU threshold. We will slightly increase confidence threshold from 0.4 to 0.5. This way we'll discard masks with lower level of certainty. In parallel, we'll decrease IOU threshold from 0.9 to 0.6, consequently dropping masks that overlap with each other in significant way. After rerunning the inference, we can see that the overall result looks much cleaner. Next up, prompting with box. I wanted to make this demo interactive and allow you to draw the prompt box on top of the image inside the notebook. This is why we need to run those few utility functions defined at the top of the section. Now we can use the mouse to define our prompt. First, let's go for dog's tongue. Run few next cells. And you can see that the image is being correctly segmented. Now let's move back and use a different prompt. How about nose? Delete the old box, run cells below once again. And yeah, fast sum is once again correct. How about going for the whole dog? We make the prompt, run the cells below once again, and plot the result. Well, this time fast sum did something unexpected, returned not only the dog, but the whole person holding the dog. This is important because it's inconsistent with Sam's behavior. Sam would never return the masks extending beyond the box prompt. Now let's move on and try prompting the model with points. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to make it as interactive as the boxes, so we need to do it the boring way. We define the point as the two element list storing X and Y coordinates and pass it as an argument to the point prompt method. In my case, I'm aiming for the middle of the nose, but surprisingly, once again, the model decided to return the most general mask. I'm not saying the result is incorrect, but probably could be a bit more precise. Last but not least, the text prompt. All we need to do is pass desired text as an argument here, the inference takes noticeably longer and it's because internally, FastSum is looping over masks and cropping the original image. 
all the crops are passed through clip model, looking for the one that most accurately fits the text we used. But after a few seconds, we see the result and it's correct. Now the problem is, if I go up and change the prompt to a doc, for example, and rerun the inference, I will get the sky. And if I'll do it once more and ask for a car, I'll get part of the backpack. I'm not sure if it's because of some bug in FastSum implementation, or Clip is simply not powerful enough to assign the right label to the crop. I remember that during CVPR, I saw multiple papers trying to use Clip in a similar way and actually succeeding. So I guess it should be possible. Now, if you would like to use FastSum with text prompting in your project, make sure to test it and confirm that it can work reliably. I think that one of the most interesting things that we can do here is to run fast sum and sum on the same input image and compare the results. We loaded fast sum already, so at this point all we need to do is to do the same with sum. To save time, I won't dive deep into sum API in this video, but we have an awesome sum tutorial, probably one of the most popular on YouTube. Feel free to use it to get up to speed. As usual, the link is in the top right corner and in the description below. In the meantime, we change our input image to the one depicting the robot in the car factory, load the sum weights into the memory. Once again, we can see increased GPU RAM usage. Now our GPU stores two models simultaneously. We can finally run an inference with both of them and present the result side by side. The difference is hard to notice at first glance because there are so many things happening in the image. So let's scroll a bit lower and create a separate plot, but this time using blank black background. Now we start to grasp the difference between fast sum and sum output. Sum is a lot better at segmenting those small objects in the center and the right side of the image. We can also print the mask count for both models, and it's 172 versus 68. Another cool thing that we can do is to look for masks that are detected by SUM, but are not detected by fast SUM, and plot them separately. To do that, we'll first define a utility function that will filter masks based on their IOU, and then run it. After a few seconds, we will get our plot. As you can see for complicated scenes, the difference is quite significant. Fast sum delivers on the promise of smaller, faster alternative for segment anything model. Obviously Google Colab is not the perfect place for precise or even unprecise model performance measurements. Therefore treat roughly 100 millisecond inference speed we obtained with a grain of salt. Fast sum authors reported 40 milliseconds, but they performed their benchmark on significantly better GPU, NVIDIA RTX 3090. So all things considered, such a discrepancy in results seems quite normal. Either way, fast sum is at least an order of magnitude faster than unoptimized sum. In terms of accuracy, fast sum seems to be doing quite well on simple scenes. However, the difference in quality between fast sum and sum increases with the complexity of the scene. In a rather difficult example with car factory robot, fast sum was able to find less than a half of masks found by sum. Also keep in mind that fast sum has different API than the original model. Classes and methods have different names and take different arguments. So you won't be able to just plug it in and replace the original sum. Probably additional dev work will be required. Lack of proper Python packaging can also prove problematic, especially if you plan to plug the model into larger application. However, yesterday, while writing script to this video, I find out that fast sum is now available as part of Ultralytics PIP package. I didn't verify how it works, but still decided to let you know it might be a potential solution to this problem. And finally, the text prompt. Well, 
it's not there yet in my opinion. Works very unreliably, especially for more complicated scenes. So make sure to test if it works for your particular use case. All in all, FastSum is an interesting alternative to the mighty sum, especially if you are willing to give up a little bit of prediction quality for much lower latency. Or if the images that you are working with are simple enough, in those cases, it's quite possible you won't even notice the difference. That's all for today. If you liked the video, consider subscribing and watching our other sum related content. Here's an interesting one where we combined grounding dyno and sum and ended up with a powerful zero shot instance segmentation model. So strong it can even be used for automated data labeling. Give it a try. In the meantime, stay tuned for more computer vision content coming to this channel soon. My name is Peter and I see you next time. Bye.